I was willing to make that sacrifice for the struggle, and I will continue as long as I am alive. I became involved in questions of social justice, of saying, we must be fair to everybody. It's not good enough for some people to have three SUVs in the garage and other people are on the street begging for small change. We cannot accept that society. I will struggle for that society. I thought that the ANC had made a commitment to struggle for that. Now it seems that if the ANC is more interested in looking after the corporations and a small elite section of black society, even white society, but for the mass of the people there is just poverty, hardship. So of course I think we must resist that. And I went to prison on Robben Island I was arrested for protesting against apartheid. I was willing to make that sacrifice for the struggle, and I will continue as long as I am alive. I've always said that uh, if you were writing honestly about South Africa, it would be impossible to exclude the politics because the politics it's part of the landscape of the country. But it's also about my experience. And when I say experience, I mean much more than just the political experience. The political experience is only a fragment of my total experience, which is also about academia, it's about sport, it's about being in love and having love affairs. So. I, I'm a little annoyed when people focus exclusively on the political themes because I insist that in fact my life has been very varied, very multifaceted, and I think my poetry is very varied. It is true, my dear, I offered you such extravagant professions of fantastical passions that it was understandable, even pardonable, that you should believe all things, even the most unlikely were possible, could come to pass. Alas, my dear, in this obdurate, unforgiving world, when de Klerk and his killers prowled around and challenged us, other passions and passions and desires summoned me to the struggle. It will not console you to know I filled my few empty hours gazing at my empty arms and weeping, gazing at my empty arms and weeping. It seems to me that while there has been some progress, one, has not been as much as was hoped for. Our expectations have not been fulfilled, and that's point one. But point two, much more seriously, I think, the government, ANC government, has adopted a policy and has chosen a direction which is part of the whole global pattern of neoliberalism, which is saying the market is more important than anything else, and you allow the corporations and the banks to dictate policy. They'll tell you what they want you to do, what they don't want you to do, and unfortunately, the Mbeki government 
But even earlier, even under the Mandela government, you had the adoption of a neoliberal policy. What we're seeing, and you could have anticipated it, a lot of dissatisfaction. People in the townships and what are called the informal settlements, people who are homeless. You even now, as you know, you have what is called a xenophobia, people attacking each other, Africans attacking other Africans, and sometimes South Africans attacking other South Africans, not always even foreigners. So what you have is a profound disappointment, you have dissatisfaction, you have anger, and all of that is leading to a very unsatisfactory situation. So that those of us who were full of optimism in 1994 have seen our hopes being disappointed. And the struggle, and this is very serious, the struggle for democracy, for equality, has been betrayed in our time. But I must say, I have a feeling of optimism that the tide is changing, the disappointment, the disenchantment, the disillusionment. A lot of that is being expressed, and people are saying, we're not satisfied with the situation. And we're going to demonstrate, we're going to march, we're going to say we want change, but we want real change, not cosmetic change, not superficial change, not change for a small elite at the top, which benefits from what's called BEE, which we sometimes say is really BEEE, -E -E, because it's black economic empowerment for the elite. So there is dissatisfaction. But there's also, I think, a climate where people are beginning to demand change, express their dissatisfaction and say, this is not good enough, this is not what we hoped for. Conference on Extractive Industries is really looking at mining, particularly at Anglo-Platinum or Anglo-Plats as it is called, but we're also looking at the other industries that are extracting gold, diamonds, uranium from South Africa. And our concern is with the mining industries. Because this is the wealth of Africa, the wealth of South Africa, which is being taken out of the country. And the people who are benefiting are mostly the shareholders in the corporations, they're not in South Africa. So much of the wealth of South Africa is going outside South Africa. The under the black economic empowerment, where some of the black elites are part of these corporations, so they are benefiting from it. And of course, the ANC has invested in these corporations, so it is also benefiting. But the people are not benefiting. People are underpaid, their land is being taken away, they are being dispossessed, they are being displaced, their land is being lost without their knowledge, without their permission. Suddenly they are being evicted from the land. So that's a very serious problem. Greater transparency, public discussion, and public consultation. We condemn the actions of the government in collusion with the mining corporations, where the government acts in favor of the corporations and against the interests of the people and the citizens. The conference requests that there should be open and continuing discussion on these and related issues so that we can give serious attention to the correction of these problems.